that if you can poison a group of people with EMF radiation that makes them more susceptible to viral infection, this example I want to give you might, might make things a little more clear. Imagine that you're a famous dolphin researcher and you're, you're studying dolphins in the Arctic Circle. And suddenly they're all getting sick, some of them are dying, and you're asked to investigate. But you can only ask one question. Would you say, well, let me examine a dolphin and let me take a look at its gen genetic makeup? Yeah, that would be kind of stupid. That would be kind of stupid. Yeah. Um, we get that a lot. Though. Yeah. It's my genetics. That's why I have it's just acid reflux. Genes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or you could say, I want to see this dolphin and that dolphin. I want to see if they have a virus because it might be contagious. And that's why all these dolphins are getting sick. I was just asked the other day by someone new to us if I was the Forbidden Doctor. Of course I said no. The Forbidden Doctor is not me at all. We are not the Forbidden Doctor. Jack is not the Forbidden Doctor. It's in you. The Forbidden Doctor is that magical, mystical power inside of you that is controlling and healing you. It's that beautiful, marvelous, almost miraculous force that controls all healing. It's that innate intelligence, that life force directed influence that triggered your DNA to guide the building of your body after conception. Yeah, it's that power that sustains your life, repairs your wounds and lesions, and it never stops working. It's that essential part of you that keeps you alive and heals your every hurt. This is the Forbidden Doctor. It's not me. It's that part of you, the powers that be, have decreed forbidden to ever learn about or even consider and never, ever rely upon. For it is forbidden that you even know this life force exists at all. You are your own forbidden doctor. Yes. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Jack. And Mary. And welcome back to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. This is podcast episode 193, what they won't tell you about coronavirus and 5G. And because of what's going on, this crazy time with this coronavirus, we're doing, we're calling this and doing a special alert podcast yeah. about something so forbidden oh, yeah. that it could be to date. The darkest money-driven conspiracy in the history of mankind. Yeah, it could actually be an end-level extinction event. Some people are referring it to that, a true apocalypse. What we're talking about is a true existential crisis, and I believe this coronavirus is a cover for the coming full rollout of 5G. Uh, so, for a moment, let's just go into denial. Yeah, that's <laughs> <And> me. <laughs> Let's tell you about something much more encouraging and positive to help in the supporting of your health. We have some great news. Um, we announced it last podcast, but some great news about our website, ForbiddenDoctor.com. We've just opened up to the world our 600 plus symptom protocols. Oh, yes. So in other words, if let's say you, you have... Uh, well, I... Yeah. This one, this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> okay, well, let's I will say, say, let's let's say, say a man out there has uh, some ED. Some man out there has yeah. ED. <laughs> Erectile dysfunction, and you're embarrassed, and you don't want to tell anyone, and you choose not to go to a doctor, and you are so embarrassed you don't even want to do our free symptom survey. You can simply search on our website for our erectile dysfunction protocol, and just know the supplements are in order of importance, and we have had many reports of the first supplement recommended, Simplex M, making significant strides in this area. It's simple. You just click in the upper left search field on our website, type erectile. Yeah, you can't type ED. You have to have three letters there. I found out just recently. That's right. So, and then you can just, well, discreetly read about and purchase the protocol in one easy swoop. And when you join our new $29 VIP membership program, you can get the erectile dysfunction protocol as well as all others for 20% off. Yeah, that's a deal. Yeah, you're not going to find a lower price for standard process products anywhere. You also get free shipping over $100 and discreet HIPAA-compliant texting capabilities right to us. And we'll answer the text personally, or at least our nutritionist will, if you prefer. You choose. And just understand, we'll text you an answer to your questions quickly 
during business hours. You can text us 24-7. Because we have been known to oh, answer yes. texts all hours of the night and weekends. <laughs> We're just saying. Yeah. But we don't guarantee that. But during business hours, you'll get a quick response. So for sure, we can get back to you much sooner during a business, but... You know, just go to ForbiddenDoctor.com slash VIP or on our homepage of our website, click the box for VIP membership to learn more. So we're going to get started with some basic ideas. First, um, we're going to talk to you about some forbidden information about 5G. This is necessary to understand our take on the coronavirus that's currently called COVID-19. Yeah, that's the name of it. Coronavirus <clears throat> is a classification of cold viruses. And this one is particularly yeah, called... Yeah, cold virus, flu virus, influenza, they're all coronas, but this is a particular corona. So many people around the world, including concerned citizens and scientists, actually, and even some government officials are becoming aware of the danger and specifically the health danger of 5G. Yeah, it's dangerous enough that it's already been banned in uh, many places like uh, Brussels, the Netherlands, parts of Switzerland, Ireland, Germany, the UK, Austria, I mean Australia, and uh, some parts here in the USA. Yeah, we don't, where are those places? Well, here's some federal, <clears throat> excuse me, here's some background <laughs> information about these, uh, the 1G through 5G microwave designations from the uh, Federal Communications Commission Chairman Tom Wheeler. Yeah, he says the first generation wireless technology was called 1G. And basically, that just did voice. Yeah, that was just the original cell phones. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you could. And then, two, then 2G came out, which was the voice, you know, cell phone voice as well as texting. Mm -hmm. Then 3G came out with a very limited way of data. So you could kind of get on the internet out and about in the city. Yeah, and then 4, four just sped 3G up. You know, it completed the... Uh, what they call the digital data migration, but 5G. 5G. Y'all think that it's just going to be super, super fast and it's going to be wonderful, but there's so much more to it. And that's what we're here to tell you today. <clears throat> we all think it's great that with 4G, we can download a movie in a few minutes, but with 5G, we'll be able to do it in seconds. I mean... Yeah, and uh, it comes at a price. And I mean, if you could download a two-hour movie in just a few seconds... Yeah. You know, who's going to complain about that? But it comes with an, op an apocalyptic increase in EMF radiation. Yeah, and, and to this day, <clears throat> there is, we haven't been able to find it. And others that we've talked to haven't been able to find it. Not one reliable test or study regarding the safety of 5G. And Mary, why is that? Because the leadership of the FCC... It's, it's, it's like the leadership of the FDA. It's a revolving door of business executives <clears throat> um, of the very companies that these regulatory bodies are to oversee and control. Yeah, this is, this is the, uh, the quintessential fox guarding the hen house in both the FCC and the FDA. And after all, 5G uh, is not just the next generation of mobile uh, connectivity after 4G. It is a radically entirely different new type of technology. It's a military technology, and it's used on the battlefield. It's now being deployed, uh, which is a military term, of course, in the civilian realm. Yeah, there's a British scientist we, I'm just going to quote here. He says, I have to tell people 5G is a killer. I'm Mark Steele. That's his name, Mark Steele. And for anybody who hasn't heard of me, I'm a weapon systems Heads up display expert, one of the leading experts in the world. I've actually blown the cover in this relation to this. And the reason I'm an expert is because I invented them. What this 5G rollout is, is a weapon system. Yeah. Now, what's important to understand what the what 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. Yeah. You know, we're told in the IEEE beam forming document that this technology uh, could cook your eyes like eggs. Or they, they experimented with it in World War II. Yeah. These and are mil military uh, weapons. These are assault frequencies. Yeah. Now it's, a, it, it's what's called a phased array weaponry, and it's being sold, and it's disguised as primarily a communication system when the frequency bands it uses, which is 24 gigahertz to 100 plus gigahertz, including the, what's known as the MMW, the millimeter waves, 
are the very actual same ones used in active denial systems, in crowd control. Now, when I had my daily radio show at KTalk a number of years ago, I remember this coming up several times during demonstrations, especially in some foreign countries. Where they, and we have the same system here, active denial systems, where they can turn this uh, beam on a crowd to disperse it because they feel like they're on fire. This IEEE <clears throat> beam. It has, very, it has very shallow penetration in the skin, but it burns. So, and like a sunburn on a sunburn on a sunburn, and so it, disp- you know, it disperses the crowd in a hurry. So you can beam into people, mm. and they either start throwing up. Oh, if it's if it's heavy enough, they'll get very nauseous, mm-hmm. disoriented, and vomit. Or they just run. Or they run to get away from the burn. Yeah. So <clears> the <throat> data we're going to look at um, is all published science. Um, the testing results, or they're called public standards in microwatts per centimeter squared. Right. And so what we're going to talk to and you. And the reason it's squared <clears throat> because it's huge, huge numbers. Yeah, uh, hugely small yes. here to start with. Yeah, to start uh, with. What it, well, what it means is, is how many watts is required to hit a per a square, a centimeter squared, mm-hmm. you know, a centimeter on all sides. And what it and does. And remember, a two and a half, two and a half centimeters is an inch. So this is less than half an inch on the sides of a square. How much energy has to hit that in order to make a cell phone work? So, in, how, or, how, in order to make a cell phone work, <clears throat> you need point zero 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 twenty seven. Yeah, it's a minimum level. That's 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 a zero point. That's nine zeros. Nine zeros two seven of a watt. <clears throat> I think the flapping of a mosquito wing <laughs> creates more wattage than that. However, for example. A fellow working in construction all day long, 70, for, for an eight-hour construction job, will produce about 75 watts of energy. That's all. And so here, nine zeros to seven is what's required for a cell phone to work. But zero, 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 four zeros and 27, pine needles were found to age prematurely. Yes, now we jump up to a, an understandable number, 0.05. Children aged 8 to 17 would experience... This is if they're in the presence of this EMF radiation. Uh, Enough radiation to register as 0.05 microwatts per centimeter. At 0.05, children aged 8 to 17 would experience headache, irritation, concentration, difficulties, and behavioral problems. Yeah, and we've just noticed that they are installing these around schools, too. Now, point... Point uh, zero point one is where the where building biology guidelines for extreme concern begin. In yeah. other words, when that microwatt per centimeter hits point zero one, no zero point one. Zero point one. This is where you kind of you know open up your eyes and look a little closer as to what's going on. Yeah. So the, at one point zero, just the, ten times more. Yeah. One point zero. One point zero. More, Produce sperm DNA fragmentation and a decrease in sperm vi- viability in vitro. And also at 1.0, the science shows the following bodily effects can occur. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, chest pains, difficulty breathing, and indigestion. Yeah. 2.5 saw that calcium, actually the voltage-gated calcium channels in the body were altered which would alter metabolism and alter the function of heart muscle cells. Now, we talked a lot about this in our last podcast on coronavirus, how it alters the calcium channels and disrupts that. And so this is why people get sick when this type of energy is And if they don't it long enough, they start having heart arrhythmias. But we'll talk about that a little later. At 4.0, changes in the hippocampus affecting brain memory and learning happen. 6.0, 6.0, DNA damage to the cells. Yeah. Now, we told you all that to tell you this. At 7.9 to 8.0, this is the output of smart meters, where if you're standing only one foot away, uh, it caused in every single case where it was tested, the uh, human energy field. We have energy fields around our body. <clears throat> if you don't believe that, then don't bother getting an EKG or an EEG the next time you're in the hospital. Yeah. 
But that's what these instruments do is they measure the energy field of the body, uh, either directed through the heart with an EKG or directed through the brain with an EEG. A- anyway, in front of a smart meter, standing one foot away, your entire energy field was obliterated. Now, Where, you got to explain smart meters. Well, the smart meter... <clears throat> And those of you who've been listening to talk radio, radio know something about that because it's been discussed for the last decade. But the uh, remember, the meters on your house, gas meter, electric meter, are not yours. They belong to the, the, the companies that install them. And so... And these are the meters that have the little thing going around really that's slowly. That's the analog. That's the old ones. The analog. The, mm-hmm. the new digital ones um, are what's called smart because they... Ra- they send out an EMF. They send out a radio signal so that uh, a fellow representing or a woman representing the gas company, the electric company, driving by the neighborhood, picks up your meter and it's registered in the computer and they keep going. That, st- that gets rid of having to pay somebody walking house to house recording meter numbers. Now, remember, 6.0 mm. DNA damage occurs in cells. So smart now we're meters. Up to eight. Yeah, the smart meters are between 7.9 and 8.0. So essentially eight. And yeah. So they did the study where they brought people in front of they stood one foot away from these smart meters. And they there's a video on this, but we can't show it on the podcast. Well, there was a degradation in the cell walls, which had been broken down and it caused a mutation in the mycoplasma inside the cells and a phenomenon that's called the RULO. That's R-E-U-L-E-A-U-X, where the red blood cells start stacking up which makes it very difficult for the blood to deliver oxygen to the tissues. Yeah, this is trauma to the blood cells. Yeah. So what's this mean? Well, an infant's crib could be just a meter away on the other side of the wall. And a a building, you know, of uh, if it's an apartment, it could be a building that would have maybe 12 smart meters. That's very common. Even a conservative number in apartment buildings tested at 19.8. Microwatts. Microwatts per centimeter squared, 19.8. So, so go back there. So go, you guys run outside, look on your buildings and your house, I mean, and look at your meters. If they're smart meters, move your baby's crib away from that. Luckily, we went and looked at ours and it's on the other side of the garage. Yeah, that helps. And we're going to even put some... And there's no babies. <laughs> I, I don't think so. And then we're going to put a um, piece of tinfoil or something on the back side of the wall even to try yeah, this and lessen is, this. This is hundreds of times higher than levels which were clearly indicated as harmful effects. Yeah. At 9.5, uh, even though there are these known health effects at levels far lower, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg have set their safe levels at 9.5. Wow. <clears throat> safe. 10 and that- is considered safe for China. Poland and Russia, and this is the same level at which behavior has been altered, producing uh, reflexes of of avoidance. You're running away. It you know, burns you. It hurts you. With it makes as little you sick. as with as little as thirty minutes of exposure. Yeah. So how can you know? And this is a question that's been debated for a long time. How can utilities and governments get away with forcing these devices on people when they have been tested as high as twenty? microwatts per centimeter squared. And, and remember, you don't own mm. this on your house. They can just come and replace it, and you don't know. You could have the analog one there, and then the next day you've got this smart meter on the side of your well, house. Well, this is how they can do this. In Canada and the United States and several other civilized countries, the safety limit is set at... at drum roll, drum roll. Yeah, the last number we talked about was 10. For China, some Poland, apart- and Russia. Some apartment buildings were tested at 19.8. With a bunch of them around. But through le- national legislation, the new safety limit is 600 to 1,000 microwatts per centimeter squared. I mean, this so-called safety <sighs> limit is literally tens of thousands of times higher than levels which are known to damage health, according to peer-reviewed published science. All you got to do is Google it, and you can read the actual reviews. There's about 10,000 studies done on this. So if you complain that there's a light pole installed next to your house... That has the 5G. That has the 5G antenna on Mm -hmm. it, and you can recognize them. They're beginning to be very obvious. They look like little drones. Or a smart meter installed on your house. They, these people, these companies have made provisions in the legal language that if complaints are made to point back to the acceptable levels... Um, as determined by the FCC, there's nothing that can be done about it. You can't, 
you, you, you can't complain. <clears throat> now, I want to read a little quote here by Jerry Phillips, Ph.D., and he's talking about the radio, the scientific work he did to see if these radio frequencies were safe for Motorola. Okay? You want to read it? Well, a quote, the radio frequency radiation work that we did was supported by Motorola. The relationship started really very cordial and very stress-free, but only up until we started generating data. These folks were very upset and began to talk about how they're going to handle this. What sort of spin can we put on this? What can we expect from this? And from that point on, the relationship changed, he says. Continuing the quote, what we saw was that Motorola began to exert more and more control over the work, telling us what to do, telling us how to write abstracts, what to say in the abstracts, what to say in the papers, how to do the work. No, don't do this. Yes, do it this way. This was unacceptable. I had completed our study of DNA damage, and I submitted the final report to Motorola. They simply weren't willing to accept my interpretation of my study, my evaluation of my study, my knowledge of science at that point, and tried to urge me not to publish the study, end quote. Wow. So we have a little slide here that you, got, you all can't see, but non-industry studies, um, the radio frequency research, 70% said there was harmful effects for the non-industry studies, like... Motorola or AT&T Well, this, was, this or is where Verizon. the studies were paid for by non-industries. Yes. Industries not related to what they were studying. And industries that were paying for the study that was the, the industry they were studying, they said harmful effects only were present in 32% of the population. Less yeah. than half of what the non related non-industry studies indicated. Yeah, that was information <clears throat> compiled by Dr. Henry Lay at the University of Washington. So industry studies, of course, had a completely different result from studying these. In, um, in testimony before Congress, Senator Pac Patrick Colbeck discussing Senate Bill 637, and this was a while ago, quote, it's a fact that most insurance companies will not indemnify against EMF effects. Telecom companies around the world are warning their investors of potential major costs due to real or alleged risks of EMF pollution from the products. Interestingly enough, they're warning their investors, but they're not telling their customers. They're basically keeping it quiet because that's where the money comes from. So we're using technology that could be very potentially harmful to us, and the investors know it, but their only worry is that they might lose money, not that their health might be affected, end quote. And how do they prevent lawsuits? Well, in 1996, President Clinton signed the Telecommunications Act into law. Section 704 of the TCA states that no health or environmental concern can interfere with the placement of telecom equipment. You want to read that again? <laughs> I don't think I heard you right. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me clear my throat. No health or environmental concern can interfere with the placement of telecom equipment. Yeah, so when they're putting telecom equipment in your neighborhood and they're putting it right in front of your house, you can't do a thing about it. That was passed in 1996. That's how our rights in regards to health have been taken away by the wireless industry. And what this legislation did is it gives power to regulate the health effects of wireless technology to the Federal Communications Commission. The FCC. Yeah. And the FCC is just a spectrum uh, auctioning agency. It's not a health agency. They don't even have one biomedical person on their team. The FCC has a governing board. There is not one biomedical person sitting on that board, that team. This so, means <clears throat> that if they want to put a cell tower in front of your home, you can't go to the city council and say, hey, stop this. I don't want it. I heard in a lecture that there are over 10,000 studies proving that it's harmful. I don't want it. My child is sick. And they will tell you, you're not allowed to mention this in the city council because Section 704 that I just read you says that the city will be sued by the wireless industry. And that's, that's federal legislation. Now, uh, in uh, past podcasts, we've talked about human fertility. Right now, about one in six American couples are now unable to have a child when they want to. I think it's up to one, mm. one in seven, at least in Utah. Well, I think it's, dry, it's, it's worse. Now it's one in six. And, and how many of you know the last year uh, the birth rate in this country dropped the worst that it ever has in recent history? 
the birth rate in America last year dropped 3%. In a single year. Now, that may not seem like a lot, <laughs> uh, but it is. Keep that going. Compared to previous years. Yeah. You see, sperm cells should swim, and they should swim straight. But if you expose them to radio frequency phone waves, like from an iPhone, they swim in a circle. And they, because they have mitochondrial DNA damage to the sperm cell. Yeah, there's a video of this, watching sperm spin around. Instead and of swimming straight, they're spinning around this. Spinning in a, circle. in a circle. And that's not just the iPhone radio waves. I mean, that's just iPhone that, radio. That's, just that's the, not 5G. Yeah, that's just a cell phone. Now, we're not talking about being in the presence of 5G. Uh, 5G rollout for America, most of America hasn't happened yet, yet we are having decreasing fertility rates in this country. And the same thing's happening to, to a woman's eggs. But unfortunately, the effects of this won't be seen immediately. The experts are saying maybe not until the third or fourth or fifth generation. That'll be about 150 years from now. And then, of course, it's too late to say, oh, we're so sorry. It's, it's much too late to yeah, say, stop the 5G toxicity. And why would that happen to a woman and not a man? Because as a woman is carrying a female baby in her womb, the eggs that that baby will have when she hits maturity as an adult that can become fertilized are already forming in her inside her mother. Mm -hmm. So when her mom is laying around watching TV with her cell phone sitting on top of her pregnant belly. Uh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Now that's just the cell phone again. That's just the cell phone. That's not 5G. Mm. So the the China um, coronavirus, the COVID-19 5G connection, is a very important factor when you're trying to comprehend this coronavirus. Yeah, this, this is why you were saying that the coronavirus, the 5G, no, the coronavirus is a cover-up cover up for 5G. The rollout of 5G. Mm-hmm. We're going to get into that. Now, the coronavirus, this, this, uh, the 5G connection, doesn't mean that the bioweapons connection with coronavirus is false. I mean, it's not a case of either or. But rather, I think it just broadens the scope of the entire event. Wuhan was one of the test cities chosen for the China 5G rollout. 5G went live there on October 31st of last year, 2019, almost exactly two months before the coronavirus outbreak began. Yeah, you talked about this on your radio show. You've heard about the new war on the coronavirus, but have you heard about the 5G technology war? that has been going on for the last few years because China has been determined to come in first with the first big rollout of 5G, and it looks like they have succeeded. In Wuhan. In yep. Wuhan is the first And one. also the um, cruise ships that have... The been... cruise ships that, that weren't anywhere near Wuhan, Mm-mm. that didn't have anybody on their boat who had been to China, suddenly they have coronavirus throughout the ship, COVID-19. Well, they and, may have had people that have been to China. But what did they but advertise to get people on their, their cruise line? Oh, that they have... They their, have the full 5G on their cruise ship. Don't worry that you're out at the ocean. Yeah. We have full 5G. And all it right, disrupted so what, their calcium channels and they all... And the all, sodium, but, potassium pump and everything else that it does. Yeah. But we've talked about that, I think, in a couple of other... Uh, Our last co- coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the symptoms associated with this COVID-19? Well... You have, this is what you, you got off the internet, but most people are saying that it's a very mild problem. I, I mean, with when it's bad. Yeah, when it's bad, when people are... Which you, you almost have to be over 80, 85 years old, and you have to already be sick from something else. Yeah. Then you can get these symptoms. Remember the first one <clears throat> that died in America? They said that President Trump said they were severe, had severe medical problems. And they, the first nine or so were yeah, from, Washington. yeah, they were from a nursing home. So they were old, but here's what they list. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, irregular heart rate, cardiovascular shock, severe muscle pain, fatigue, and heart damage or heart attacks. Now we haven't seen that happen in young people, but you know, that's what they list on the internet. So what are the symptoms associated with EMF radiation poisoning? I mean, there's too many to list. However, some of the more frequently experienced are... Adding to those above. uh, You're going to see the same thing here. Heart irregularities, including sudden heart attack, headache, general muscular pain, fatigue, and suppressed immune response, 
that can lead to more bacterial and viral infections. Mm -hmm. Sound Sound familiar? familiar? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. We so, said that together. Mm, that was great. So we want to go into some of the history surrounding the appearance of flu epidemics and the increased electrification of the earth. And this cannot be properly understood without some serious personal research and stop taking what the mainstream media and the, the, the people have to say every moment on TV. I don't care what station you're listening to. It's saying the same it's thing. Whether it's liberal or it's conservative or it's business oriented yeah. or it's sports area oriented or anything else. They're all saying the same thing. Wash and your hands for 20 minutes mm, or 20, 20 seconds. seconds. And they're not saying mm. a thing, not a thing, not a thing about nutritional, six feet of somebody else. Yeah, nutritional support. <clears throat> it's like they're just all mimicking the exact same things that the, I don't know who hands down to them. And you might want to research Dr. Malt, Martin Paul, P-A-L-L, Martin Paul. You can Google it on the internet and what his years of research has had to reveal concerning EMF and the latest quantum jump with 5G. You also might want to read the book, as I am now reading it, The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. It's fascinating. We've been doing so much studying on this. So, Without these two sources, it might be difficult to properly understand what is going on right now. So Martin... With Dr. COVID-19. Dr. Martin Paul. P-A-L-L. And then The Invisible Rainbow. And you can just download that on Kindle. Yep. By Arthur Furstenberg. Just like it sounds. If yeah. I, first, F-I-R-S, Furstenberg. So what's the history of man-made electrification of this earth? I mean, as we've been experienced since the 1700s and the incidence of coronavirus and other flu-like symptoms. Uh, but just by another way of introduction here, we think about uh, Benjamin Franklin discovering electricity when he had the key on the kite string. He was just proving other stuff that they had found out in Europe. Uh, it's not really fair to say he discovered electricity. They had done it almost 50 years earlier. They, you know, <clears throat> they had wool carpets back then. And people who could walk across the floor shuffling their feet on the wool carpet would generate a static shock. So they developed a big spinning wheel that would, um, I don't know, if you've ever had that gag gift where somebody hands you a, a glass of water and tells you to put your finger in it and kapow, no. a huge shock comes out of it and throws I'm, you backwards. I've never done that. And makes a tremendous noise. Yeah, well, they've electrified... Must be a guy thing. I don't know. They've electrified the water. Well, they knew back in the early 1700s that they could do this stuff. And the first chapter or two of The Invisible Rainbow by uh, Arthur Furstenberg goes into the history of all the stuff they were doing with electricity, but it was of a static nature. They had a big wheel with brushes and they'd spin it and it would generate tremendous shocks, up to 30,000 volts. Now, of course, the... uh, um, Amperage was very low, so 30,000 volts would maybe knock you back on your backside, but it, it wouldn't hurt you unless you did it over and over again. And there were people who did it over and over <laughs> again. It's a matter of record. The British Medical Journal talks about it. The uh, Lancet talks about it. Newspaper articles talk about it in the day. So <clears throat> uh, I just want to, I want to mention this because I was surprised when I read this, not that I'm a standard for electrical history, but... Um, I was amazed how much they understood about this kind of electricity. They, had, they knew how to ground it. They knew how to conduct it. They just didn't know what it was. You know, kind of like today. We still don't know what it, what it is, but we know how to control it and generate it. So, But what we're getting at... Yeah, I told you all of that, <laughs> is that as we've been... You know, what's the history of electrifying things since the 1700s? What's it got to do with coronavirus and flu? Well, every instance of influenza epidemic in our modern era has been associated with a radical quantum jump in the electrification of the earth immediately. And I'm talking about just a few months before the outbreak. And one of the most studied of these pandemics, of course, was the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, which, you know, killed any, it depends on who you listen to, 40 to 100 million. 100 million plus, and that doesn't even count China and India. Yeah, right. So it's probably even higher than that. Now, the Spanish influenza pandemic actually did not start in Spain. It started in Kansas Hmm. at a military base in early 1918. And it was particularly associated with naval bases and installations that were the first to install high-intensity radio waves. Now, you remember Guglielmo Marconi and the discovery of radio (laughs) a few years prior to this. 
And they had already, by 1918, they were dealing with um, uh, AC current. They, they were moving away from DC to AC current. They knew how to electrocute somebody as early as 1918. <laughs> and this, in early 1918, is when they finished establishing high, uh, I don't want to say altitude, just extremely high radio towers that could circumnavigate the Earth with radio signals. And this is 1918. Yep. And it was particularly associated with naval bases. Now, the use of these worldwide radio signals grew exponentially. And so with this expansion, the pandemic spread rapidly around the planet. Even in, uh, it, played, it appeared in places that had no contact with infected travelers, just like we've seen with COVID-19 over the last two months. In other words, the Spanish flu showed up on naval ships and at ports at identical times essentially proving that an infectious or contagious etiology was impossible. Yeah, just as it, it just, happened today. The in Spanish our time. flu showing up on mm -hmm. a ship at sea that had not been to port yep. for months. Yeah. And yeah, just like you said, it's just as it's happening today. Then there was, you know, a little bit later, the 1956 flu pandemic directly followed the uh, introduction of high-intensity radar installations off the coast of Alaska, Cape Cod, New York Harbor. And for the first time, the entire globe was subjected to a level of radar waves never before experienced on this earth. And within months of these installations, the 1956 pandemic began. Yeah. In the 1968, mm. the Hong Kong flu pandemic swept the globe. So this, this also followed about eight months after the first satellites in the earth's Van Allen radiation belt became operational. So, you and, know, and doctors started noticing their patients dying of acute hemorrhages yes. rather than the respiratory complications one would expect from the complications of the flu, influenza. So the Van Allen belts are the protective electrical shield around the earth. So never before had humankind been so unwise as to put radiation emitting electrical devices directly into the orbit of the earth. Yeah, now that's... You have to think about that for a minute. What is it that is protecting the Earth from cosmic rays, not just from our sun, but the center of our galaxy? And according to many astrophysicists, even outside of our galaxy, from other galaxies that goes back to the Big Bang. Tremendous cosmic rays hitting the Earth. But they're buffered and they're shielded by this electrical field a radiation belt surrounding the Earth, kind of like a big fat donut around the Earth. So we just Earth. throw satellites up there. So we electrify <laughs> it even more yeah. than it's already electrified with satellites aiming their radiation-emitting signals directly to the surface of the Earth. A few months after that happened, the Hong Kong flu broke out. So that brings us to the coronavirus outbreak. <clears throat> and Dr. Paul, P-A-L-L, in his, in his work, uh, well-reviewed, has made perfectly clear Wuhan City in China, where the outbreak started, was the initial site of the most intense rollout of 5G wireless technology on the planet. Wow. And so the rollout of 5G in our cities and towns across the globe also is coincident in time right now with the placement of thousands of radiation-emitting satellites in the ionosphere and the magnetosphere surrounding the Earth. You know, I, uh, I have a Tesla, and it's a lot of fun. I enjoy driving it, and I have been very proud of Elon Musk and for all the <laughs> innovations he's made. But, but his, latest, his latest plan <laughs> of having nearly 30,000 more satellites covering the Earth so that everybody on the Earth can have free Wi-Fi, mm. this is why I think we may be facing an existential crisis because Dr. Paul summarizes in a number of studies <clears throat> in which the EMF radiation is a cofactor in either suppressing our immune response to viral infections or itself makes viral infections more lethal. In either case, they're both bad. We are likely not dealing with just a simple viral infection as much as the consequences of this perfect storm, this intersection of a dramatic increase in our global EMF exposure as well as a possible viral cofactor. And in the same place on the earth, where both of these things showed up within two months of each other, 
and in proper order. First, the EMF exposure, then within a couple of months, the viral outbreak. So we've got some crisis care we have to do here to, to protect yeah. ourselves from this. Now, if you, if you compare the places on the earth where there have been larger rollouts of 5G and the rapid growth of COVID-19 COVID virus, you might see what's called a direct correlation. <laughs> because there's places on the earth where 5G is almost non-existent, such as sub-Saharan sub to central dark Africa. And by dark, I mean the old Congo, the, the old areas that were referred to as darkest Africa in the past. They don't have... Any. They don't have any 5G. They, they also don't have any COVID-19. They don't have any cases. And you'd say, well, they're kind of isolated and it's difficult. No, no. If you've been following world economic development with the Chinese. Yeah, they have a lot of contact the Chinese, with them. They, the Chinese have a tremendous presence in sub-Saharan and Central Africa, influencing the economic and industrial development of those areas. Yeah, we're not saying that all Chinese carry the virus no, either. No, of course not. Yeah, but there's regular traffic back and forth between Africa and China. So there's plenty of times for the Africans to have been exposed. Right. And we're all, and we're, and, and I'm not saying by any means that there isn't a serious situation with COVID-19 in and of itself. Not at all. I'm not saying that. What we are saying is that there may well be a direct correlation between the immune suppressing effects of EMF exposure that is well documented in the literature. And studies. And, and the seeming ease in some areas of the globe in which COVID-19 has easily spread. Yeah. You can go on, as I have, as I did, you can go on online and search the, install, the 5G installations around the planet where they have a full rollout and where they have, like here in, in the Salt Lake area, the experimental one, 5GE, which is not the full rollout yet. <clears throat> and you can and then compare that to what you hear in the news, like northern Italy. And um, the tremendous, just at the at top of the Alps, just north of northern Italy, some of the heaviest concentration of 5G uh, implementation in Europe. Yeah, and you have it in your neighborhood. Mm. If you look on your phone and you have a 5GE, you have a tower somewhere close to you. Remember how we used to have, not too long ago, like just a few months ago, LTE. You mean back when the internet was fast? Yeah, in the dark ages. Yeah, yes. when it was fast. Now, now it's 5GE and it's super slow because they haven't turned on the 5G yet. Thank goodness. Not full, not full power. Not full power. Because they're still installing antennas. If you antennas. have that on your phone, that means you are in the area where they're going to turn on 5G. Yeah. Now, I want to give you a practical Explain a story here, a practical explanation that if you can poison a group of people with EMF radiation that makes them more susceptible to viral infection, this example I want to give you here might, might make things a little more clear. Um, and I'm using an example from Dr. Thomas Cowan out of San Francisco. And he said, imagine that you're a famous dolphin researcher and you're, you're studying dolphins in the Arctic Circle. And suddenly they're all getting sick, some of them are dying, and you're asked to investigate. But you can only ask one question. Would you say, well, let me examine a dolphin and let me take a look at its gen genetic makeup? Yeah, that would be kind of stupid. That would be kind of stupid. Yeah. Um, we get that a lot, though. Yeah. It's my genetics. That's why I have it's just acid reflux. Genes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or you could say, I want to see this dolphin and that dolphin. I want to see if they have a virus because it might be contagious. And that's why all these dolphins are getting sick. Okay. Or. The best one. The best one of all that explains why all the dolphins are getting sick in a particular area. Excuse my French. <laughs> Did somebody put some shit in the water? <laughs> Exxon Valdez. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember the Exxon Valdez yeah. oil spill has, and what happened to the animals up there? Has our airwaves, Did, have our airwaves become polluted with the 5G toxicity? Maybe somebody put some 5G in the water, so to speak. Yeah. So. So we at the Forbidden Doctor do believe this could become an existential crisis. Yeah. And people are legitimately asking what they can do to help protect themselves and their families. So we, we don't treat coronavirus symptoms at Forbidden Doctor, no, but we, we do offer support for what we call the immune alliance in your body, and that's podcast 136, what to do before, during, and after the flu. And it would apply it would very apply well to here. this. Yeah, so your body can deal with the viral influence as well as we offer support for helping the body dealing with, you know, electromagnetic, 
electromagnetic fields that surround us. Yeah, because a lot of us are living in it 24-7. Yeah. So the first thing I would do is eliminate every source of EMFs you can from your, your life. You're going to need to get an EMF meter to locate the EMF sources in your home office elsewhere. There's several on Amazon, reasonably priced with very good reviews. Yeah, and then I would suggest two protocols, one for the immune system and the other one, yeah, and the immune system one is our flu, vac, our flu, 136. Cor coronavirus. Well, no, it's the protocol oh, on our yes. website. Yeah, it's called the flu coronavirus, what, and it's got it split up in before, during, and after. And then the other one is a new protocol we put together for the effects of EMF on our body. They're both available on ForbiddenDoctor.com. But we want to repeat, we do not treat any disease. That's the job of medicine. But we do recognize the ability of the body, given the proper tools, to heal itself. But medicine has, has a blackout on any type of nutritional support for this coronavirus. They're not saying anything about how to stay healthy and build the yeah, immune every system. Every single report says the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And not one statement not one about strengthening your own immune response yeah i mean i want to i you know calcium 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 let's just keep taking that just that the cheapest mineral on earth we recommend so. also you might take a walk in the grass barefoot mm -hmm. I've, I, we've we've talked about this in the past so that well, you better ground yourself to the earth because you pick up electrical charges all the time a lot of you live on houses live in houses built on cement pads and you walk out to the garage or your driveway or the, or the uh, carport on a cement pad and you get into a car that has rubber wheels and you drive to work and you walk in over cement or asphalt to an office that's built on a cement pad and you may have leather or rubber soles on your shoes we get the and idea. you never <laughs> once touch anything that can ground you out until you touch somebody's hand or of course we don't do that anymore. With no, elbow we to have elbow, to elbow. We can't even get six feet from somebody. And you download a static shock that you've picked up all along, and that static charge has been in you, electrifying you, affecting your physiology. So you need to ground yourself. Get yeah. out there in the earth. Just and, not under yeah. a 5G light pole. Yes. They're, yeah. in, they're installing them in the Wherever you street see lights. EMF street lights, EM, not EMF, uh, LED, LED, LED mm -hmm. street lights, you're going to see a little round antenna up there. That's for 5G. Yeah. And we also recommend eating a high-fat diet. And why? Well, because, um, especially a diet from animal sources, because EMF poisoning will, in these are in studies that's been shown, to cause demyelination of the nerve fibers. And that's the myelin sheath that covers your nerves. They're starting to come off the nerve, and those things are almost completely made of fat. Or supplement with a yeah. lot of good oils. Especially if you see 5G cell phone towers being installed by your home or your children's school. Yeah, and if, you, if it's by your children's schools, you I mean... You may want to put them in another one. Yeah, may want to do that or homeschool or something um, and feed them a lot of fat. No more cereals. They don't need thousands. They don't need vegetables. They need fat and protein to rebuild this, the myelin sheath and the nerve fibers in your body. Um, I would also go around and check to see if you've got some of these new LED lights that are 5G capable. We actually realized we have two. No, we have more than two because we have our front porch. Um, these Philips Hue lights. <clears throat> we have entirely too many. I've ordered what I consider to be a very good EMF um, detector. Mm -hmm. It'll be here in a couple of days, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to check every square foot of the house. Yeah, and we're going to start and unscrewing move, light bulbs. We have to and... move some stuff around. If we have to go back to the old style <laughs> filament light bulbs that burn out every year. And I want to put the tinfoil <clears throat> on my head, but you said that would be a... a... <laughs> well, the tinfoil on your head will stop aliens from being able to get into your brain, <laughs> although there's some evidence they already have. Or the metal becomes a receiver. Receiver. That's See, I have one last little piece of metal in my teeth. Yeah, a I don't gold crown. Any. I've had every, I've had air, all the other metal taken out. I've got to get that gold crown replaced. Yeah, you'll be walking by, around. Zzz, zzz, yeah. Zzz, zzz. A non-metallic <laughs> crown. So feed yourself fat. Protect yourself. 
um, maybe follow the protocol we have. It's um, neuroprotective. So now the evidence that COVID-19 is a bio weapon is overwhelming. I've done, we've, I've already done a podcast on that. Mm -hmm. Four strains of the HIV virus, SARS strains inside of the RNA structure of, of the COVID-19. They're not talking about that on the media either. Um, and so is the evidence that, that 5G is involved to either cause the flu-like symptoms and pneumonia that people have been experiencing or to exacerbate the virility of the virus by weakening people's immune systems by subjecting them to pulsed waves of EMF through 5G. So we and should build and strengthen our immune systems. Oh, yes. Now, this growing international concern we all have regarding this latest juggernaut and our own government's response to it is, is no cause for panic. This is definitely a case where I think sane heads will eventually prevail. So slow down. <sighs> take some deep breaths. Do your own research. Do not take Mary's and my words for this, for, yeah. for truth. Don't. You do your own study. But also trust your body's ability to take care of itself if it's given the proper nutrition and supplementation. So if you feel you might have been exposed to COVID-19, coronavirus, or have any serious symptoms related to it, see a qualified healthcare professional, especially if you're having any breathing issues or weakness. Yes. So, and as they say, this too shall pass. Now, as we were putting the notes of this podcast together, right over the national news from a White House report. Yeah. It says most people recover without issues and people have very mild symptoms. It was Dr. George Diaz and Dr. McCary said that on national news. Yeah, following so, the president's remarks today. Right. So calm down about that. But understand that we also have heard reports that people, the government is going in and installing these 5G towers while kids are out of school and they're installing them in schools. So you need to go watch. You've, you've probably seen them out there. We saw a couple yesterday when we were driving downtown, and they look like these weird trees with, like, flat panels sticking up way yeah, into the sky. In some places, they cover them up. Next to our son, Dr. Josh's house, is a big tower like this, and it's made to look like a pine tree. Yeah, they put leaves on them and they stuff. They even it's have weird. leaves. And then we have the one here about a mile to our east that's uh, disguised as a water tower. But it's massive, 5G. So if there's a antennas. 5G rollout in your neighborhood or city, you might be interested in what we recommend supplement-wise to combat the neurological onslaught that's going to happen. Yeah, so for a 5G EMF defense protocol. And that's what we named it, 5G EMF defense protocol. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first thing we recommend is RNA, and we recommend 12 a day. So They're just little white pills. RNA has to do with the regulation of the cell replication. Yes. Cells, cells tend to replicate on the last replication. That's why when you get old skin, it keeps replicating that old skin. Yeah. So you need your body to go back and keep the original blueprint. And RNA is the keeper of the blueprint of DNA. Yep. So RNA keeps the integrity of the protein complex. So It's found in all cell cytoplasmic fluids. It was known as the fountain of youth substance back in the 1960s, and it's very important in children. Yeah, and you use it, you know, some of the uses that we've been talking about for years is for chronic infections, and especially all thyroid problems. It, it, it's the most important is to improve thyroid, thyroid activity um, that in a patient that has had lowered metabolism. And EMF These are the hypothyroid people. Yeah, uh, EMF exposure will do that, will lower metabolism. Yeah. And, and people that complain of cold extremities have difficult keeping warm. RNA carries thyroxin from the blood into the thyroid tissue. And so, one of my favorite supplements I recommend for anything to do with radiation, ionizing as well as non-ionizing, as we're talking about, is ginkgo forte. Yeah. We've studied this a lot because it's so protective of the cellular structure in your body. So you, you've all maybe have heard of the stories where ginkgo trees survived two atom bomb attacks in Japan. They're called A-bombed trees. And they're still alive today, 170, 170 of them. Every one of them has a plaque <laughs> on the tree, and they have named the trees. This is a powerful cellular protection. The ginkgo trees in Hiroshima all stand within 
2,200 meters of the center of the blast. So they would have been exposed to massive amounts of radiation. Even even this, what do they call strange black rain? The black rain, rain which, that was the darkened ash and the other particulates that went up so high, it took days for them to completely came mm, down, so came, sad. come down, excuse me. <laughs> and they described it as a black rain. So you have this incredible scene of devastation. It would take months for these poor people to, to come to grips with it. And, and just as they came out of winter, out pops these new leaves from trees that everyone thought were dead. That's the power of the ginkgo story. Yeah. So we recommend ginkgo forte, three a day. Um, it's got 72 milligrams of calcium in it, so that's wonderful. And the ginkgo biloba is about 60 milligrams. About 60 milligrams. <clears throat> it's a very incredible Another product. important product, Cellular Vitality. This by is a Standard newer product by, by Standard Process. We recommend three a day. So, and it, it, it supports the body with specific emphasis on the cellular processes that are affected by EMF radiation. Yeah. Has ginseng. For cellular stress. Yeah, and it, all, the, all the B vitamins to some extent. Most of them, yeah. Yeah, it has a bromelain, which modulates the body's natural anti-inflammatory responses. Um, uh, it has a coenzyme CoQ10. That's yep. an enzyme that's essential for the creation of energy within the mitochondria of a cell. So it also has this incredible mushroom powder that I can't pronounce. Cordyceps sinensis. Say that again real, real fast. Cordyceps sinensis. Cordyceps sinensis. <laughs> Cordyceps sinensis. <laughs> it's a mushroom powder, and it's been long prized in traditional Chinese medicine with a variety of bioactive compounds that contribute to fatigue management and the maintenance of healthy blood sugar levels. We all like that. Yes. Yeah, and it also contains <clears throat> um, cellular vitality, also contains RNA, so you'll get a little bit more. Of that. Then the other one, then these are in, in order of importance, but this one's real important, and this is Neuroplex. And because. That's food for the nervous system. Yeah. And because prolonged EMF exposure leads to derve, derve demyelination. How about leads nerve to demyelination? Yeah. Which is the breaking off of the myelin sheath, uh, and nerves will not fire if they don't have a myelin sheath. Yeah. And remember, your brain yep. is a big nerve. And then others here that you've heard us talk about many times. Of course, 636, the calcium, cataplex C, cataplex F for the immune, you know, resistance support. Aegis thyroid, thyroid, I threw that in because it supports the entire endocrine system, which would take a huge hit with this 5G um, coming down. It has the iodine in it that will protect you. Um, protect and, the thyroid. Yeah, protect so many things in your body. It, I, we also recommend wheat germ oil. Um, six a day of that. This is the portion of the vitamin E that's a hormone precursor. So we got to keep that endocrine system healthy through this. And then we also recommend... Cod liver oil, about mm -hmm. three a day for vitamin D and A. Mm -hmm. And Zymex wafers or pills for the uh, flora in the gut. Yeah, you got to keep the gut healthy for immune support. And I, I, you know, I really struggled whether to put a probiotic in there. But probiotics, remember, only work while you take them. The Zymex wafers... Um, will change the, the terrain of the gut. Right, to change the and terrain. And bring back the innate flora. Now, if you don't have good innate flora, your mother was unhealthy and blah, 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 you just didn't get... Or you weren't nursed. You weren't nursed, you didn't have a good start to life, then you want to take a probiotic every single day for the rest of your life. There's no way around that. Then to that. support the immune system from viral infections, just go to our website, uh, the top left where it says uh, um, condition or uh, symptoms, and type in flu. Uh, coronavirus, Immune Alliance Defense Protocol, just flu, just coronavirus. Flu. flu works. Flu will work Yeah, in the, in the top, top left. left search field. Yeah, so the two protocols we recommend are the flu one, of course, especially if you've come down with symptoms of coronavirus. But when they roll out 5G, we have a 5G EMF defense protocol that I think would be really important. So if the germ theory was true, that germs kill us, mm -hmm. then nobody would be left alive to believe the germ theory. So germs don't kill us. A weak immune system does. So that's what our protocols do is help build and sustain and support the immune system. Yeah, a weak immune system allows the overgrowth of the pathogenic microbes. Yeah. And whose presence and the byproducts that they produce, poisonous, and can lead to death, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you want to build the immune system. Your You're entire in immune alliance. Absolutely. Not just, you know, the gut or the lungs or whatever. You want to build your spleen, your digestive system, skin, bone marrow, liver, kidneys, lymphs, lungs, blood, 
blood, uh, you know, everything, the immune alliance. So that's why we recommend Immuplex, which is now out of stock because of coronavirus. But, but you, can, you can do ferro food, ferro food which, which is uh, almost exactly the same thing. Yeah, it is. It actually has a little more liver support in ferro food. It's a wonderful product. Um, so you can get that in the place of Immuplex, and that's kind of a sneaky thing because nobody knows about this. And we, Standard Process, still has a lot of feral food. But because of the coronavirus situation, COVID-19, excuse me, Immuplex is sold out. Yeah, and also Contraplex is sold out. And some calcium lactates, I think they still have powder, um, or they have tablets. I can't remember. One of the two. Cat F, Cataplex F is sold out. Um, but you can eat a lot of fish in the place, or you can take, you know, tuna omega three. Any um, any um, essential fatty acids can help with that. Cod liver oil. I think we still have cod liver oil, but we have lots of RNA and Zymex and Zymex and lactic acid and all those things that support your body through all this. And we need to really emphasize during this time, you need to stay off sugar and any foods that break down into sugar, like bread and chips. Alcohol, cereals, fruit, fruit juices, soft drinks. Don't give those to your kids while you're in isolation for the next week. Don't give them any sugar. So you need to eat what you crave, a very dense nutrition, mostly protein and fat. Now, we should be able to live in the world, not in isolation like we're doing now. Yeah. I mean, when or where is this going to end? When we all live in bubbles? Yeah. Yeah. And if 5G gets released, or I should say when, when? 5G gets released. Yeah. You want to protect yourself with our crisis care protocol called 5G EMF Defense Protocol. Just put in 5G Defense yeah. in the top left search bar on the website. Yeah, there you'll see an explanation of the protocol. And remember, <clears throat> the supplements are listed in order of importance. So we also want to remind you about our free symptom survey that we offer on our homepage at ForbiddenDoctor.com. You really need to clear up any health challenges oh, you might good have. Good point. Yeah, clear up these health challenges before this 5G is released. Absolutely good point. That's a critical thing. And not only is the symptom survey free, you'll be given a personalized protocol, which is going to save you money in the long run because you're not going to be taking supplements you don't need. And all of this had no charge to you. And if you do decide to purchase the recommended supplements, we want to help you out as best we can. You can get them at a 10% discount if you sign up for our text blast. And these text blasts give you fantastic coupons every single week. Just text the word healthy to 41411. And we'll text you back a coupon code, which you can then use on our website, ForbiddenDoctor.com, when you check out. Or if that's all too much for you, you can just call the office, 801 523 one eight nine zero, and they can help you sign up for the text blast. Yeah, and understand the survey saves you money in the long run. Okay, so you're not taking supplements you don't need. So don't forget to tell your family and friends to take our symptom survey. I mean, it's free. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the statements made in this podcast about specific products have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging or this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. Thank you for listening to this forbidden um, crisis alert, <laughs> um, forbidden podcast. And join us next time for another in-depth discussion of forbidden knowledge. We'll, we'll see, see you, you then. then. <laughs> All right. All right. Good job, baby.